Now, as far as conspiracy theories come, nothing comes close to believing that the Earth is flat. However, there are people out there that still believe that to be the case. Now, recently there was an experiment called the Final Experiment that went to Antarctica and it showed a 24 hour sun. And today I'm going to tell you why that cannot possibly be on a flat Earth. Now here we have an 1898 Gleason's map, and it is the go-to map for all flat earthers. As you can see, it has all the continents inside, surrounded by the Earth's oceans, and around the, the outside, the circumference, we actually have an ice wall. Now this is what the flat earthers believe. They believe that behind the ice wall is the actual continent of Antarctica, and that the Antarctic landscape, so with the ice wall, holds all of the waters in place, which allows us to have a flat plane. Now, what you have here is a representation of how the flat earthers believe the sun and the moon interacts with each other and the continents in where we live on a flat plane. Now, as you can see, the sun is illuminating and heating up areas of the Antarctic wall or the ice wall every so often. And this is how they actually believe it to be. So if you notice, there are parts of Antarctica that at all times never get a 24 hour sun. If there was a 24 hour sun there, then that would not work. It's as simple as that, because then this projection would not be possible. But this is what they've been promoting for years. This map, this model, this interaction between the sun, the moon, and the Antarctic ice wall. So if we take Nathan Oakley and we stick him on a certain part of the ice wall in Antarctica, you can see that at certain times he is being illuminated with sunlight, and at other times he is not. This is the idea that you cannot have a 24-hour sun in Antarctica, because if you did, it wouldn't illuminate other parts of the continent. We do not have a 24-hour sun in the south. The 24-hour sun in Antarctica doesn't work on a flat Earth. On a flat Earth, you can't have a 24-hour sun, a midnight sun in Antarctica. And I totally agree. In the flat Earth model, we say there isn't a 24-hour sun in the south, and there isn't. There is no midnight sun in Antarctica. So the two people you just saw there were Nathan Oakley and DITRH. Both of them are flat earthers and both of them believe that the earth is flat. They both use the AE map. In this video, what I'm going to show to you next, we actually see Nathan Oakley talking about how a flight, a flight proved the flat earth. That is a big subject for flat earthers. They do believe that flights prove a flat earth. And we're going to have a look at this now and let him explain why he believes this. So this is the flight that they were supposed to take. This is their planned route um, across to LA. Um, the problem is that when it comes to them taking this emergency landing at about this point in the flight, according to what they actually did, they took an enormous detour up to Alaska. Now, this isn't actually what happened. They just made an emergency landing. They just landed. And where did they land? Alaska. Now, in a moment, it's going to show you how this is plotted out on the azimuth equidistant map or the Gleason's map or the plane sailing map or whatever it is that you want to call it. But on the flat earth map, we have a very reasonable explanation for this. Um, it's been summed up loads of times. There are no shortcuts on the flat earth map. You can't go across the bottom of the globe if the bottom of the globe doesn't exist. And it's just the outer ring of a map. That means that you can only do one thing when you're traveling from point A to point B from the Southern Hemisphere, and that is cross northerly points that shouldn't be on your route. And this is the perfect example with them landing in Alaska to let this woman um, have the emergency med medical treatment that she required. So this is my way of putting it out there with a little bit of um, uh, verbalization of what's actually happened. Um, this woman's been 
on a flight. She's supposed to be going from A to B and has gone through F to arrive there. And she's gone and landed in uh, Alaska, which is massively north of her destination uh, upon descent. Uh, she shouldn't be in Alaska. Um, as I say, this only makes sense if we live on a flat plane. So now we cut to how the route looks on, this is actually the azimuthal equidistant map. As you can probably see from what's going on behind me, there's where they land. Um, and, you know, this makes nice, perfect sense. You'd go in a straight line if if that's the most e economical and efficient way of, of, of making the trip. So, yeah, you can probably see um, that's where they stop. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense unless you're on a flat map. So it doesn't make any sense on a globe map, apparently. And as you heard yourself, Nathan Oakley using the Gleason's map and explaining why this particular flight path apparently proved a flat earth. On the screen now, you actually see David Weiss's flat earth sun and moon clock. And as you can see, you can download it from the Apple store, etc. And he's been making quite a lot of money out of this. So the idea being that you're able to tell exactly where you are at any time in the world by using the flat earth map. We all know that isn't the case. However, he promotes it. He still talks about it. He still believes in it. However, you just heard him before saying that the flat earth doesn't work if there is a 24 hour sun in Antarctica, the same as what Nathan Oakley said. And this is why this observation is so devastating for flat earthers. At the end of the day, you cannot have a 24 hour sun in Antarctica if you believe that the Gleason's map and model is true, it cannot possibly be true because of the ice wall that goes all around the flat earth map. You have to get sunlight to different continents. There has to be sunlight in Australia. There has to be sunlight in New Zealand. There has to be sunlight in England. There has to be sunlight all over the world and you cannot have it just in one place like this, the sun cannot reside in just one place like this on the flat earth model. It just doesn't work. And so they will throw out all kinds of crazy theories. They'll say that what you're seeing here is just a light that's a projection onto some kind of blue screen in the sky to fool everybody. They will talk about lasers. It is a, an effect of lasers down there to try and fool everybody down there. They will say that it's a green screen and that it was filmed in a massive studio. Anything, anything at all to refute the actual evidence. Now, people that went, including Jerinism, they saw this for themselves. They returned to the globe after this. And it's no wonder because this absolutely kills the flat earth dead in its track. This representation here cannot work. It's impossible. Oakley cannot be at one place at the bottom of the earth, so he said, on the Gleason's map and get 24 hour sun. It's just impossible. And this is why Oakley and the rest will stick the fingers in their ears and try to tell everybody that what you see in the sky doesn't make a blind bit of difference to where you stand on the floor. This will be the rhetoric going forward. This is what they will say. Lights in the sky prove nothing. But as you heard before, they all said that at the end of the day, there cannot be a 24 hour sun in Antarctica if the Earth is flat. They said it, their own words. Let's have a little listen again to exactly what they said. We do not have a 24 hour sun in the south. The 24 hour sun in Antarctica doesn't work on a flat Earth. On a flat Earth, you can't have a 24 hour sun, a midnight sun in Antarctica. And I totally agree. In the flat earth model, we say there isn't a 24 hour sun in the south and there isn't. There is no midnight sun in Antarctica. And so when you see videos like this, which essentially say that flight paths prove the flat earth, uh, we know that's wrong because what they will use is they will use the Gleason's map as a counter to the globe model. So in just one observation or one final experiment, so in just one final experiment, which was what happened down in Antarctica, this observation changed everything for flat Earth. Put simply, it means that the flight path argument is completely dead and buried. 
it also removes any idea that you can have the Gleason's map as a working flat earth model. The flat earthers may not be happy about it, they may cry about it, but it's reality. It's just the way it is. And this is why the argument is so, so devastating for the flat earthers. I'll see you all soon.